Okay, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to our second Renaissance Roundtable. Um, it's great to see everybody. Uh, this Roundtable series is, is a new way that we've been engaging people on providing programming. Uh, I like to kind of call it a cousin to our evening seminar series that, that you might have participated in. Um, so think more casual conversations, digestible kind of snippets of projects and things that people are working on. Um, while some of us might be eating lunch or taking a break from, from a busy work day. Uh, so it's, it's really great to see um, some familiar faces and names um, and also some new, new names and faces. So for those of you who are new here, uh, welcome. Um, Sullivan Renaissance was founded in 2000 uh, by Sandra Gary to fulfill her mission of making Sullivan County a beautiful, vibrant, healthy place to live. Uh, we started with small grants for community groups to plant gardens and flowers, um, and we've grown to three really robust grant programs um, with a variety of grants that, that fund all sorts of different projects. Um, and we also, we have an awesome volunteer and intern program. Uh, we offer horticultural uh, and technical assistance um, and, and a lot more. So in addition to the work that I just mentioned, um, community engagement, discourse, and education are at the heart of, of everything we do. So that's why we've curated this program today to continue our series. Um, our first Renaissance Roundtable I do want to mention is on our YouTube channel. Um, so if you missed it or if you'd like to rewatch it, feel free to check it out on our YouTube channel. Um, it was called People Saving Places. And for um, National Historic Preservation Month in May, we featured some really great individuals throughout Sullivan County that are saving our special historic places, uh, some really cool projects. So, but today we are turning to litter. Um, we see it, we know it, we hate it. Uh, we hopefully don't contribute to it. Um, but it elicits uh, really similar responses, I'm sure, in, in all of us, anger, frustration, disappointment. Um, so today we're bringing you a panel of people who have turned those emotions into action uh, in their communities. So hopefully we can walk away with some new strategies, ideas, approaches, um, and or partnerships uh, to go forward and to um, talk trash and and you know clean it up and put trash in its place. So uh, I do want to kind of um, before we dive in, I want to take a minute to kind of frame our conversation here at Sullivan Renaissance. We often refer to this guy Jeff Spiegler, who has a really cool blog um, and website called Revitalizer Die. Uh, he kind of very bluntly puts a lot of things about community beautification and planning. Um, so he said uh, that he's had firsthand experience in seeing when the appearance of a city changes, the way people feel about their city changes. So as, as places get renovated, empty storefronts fill up, people's relationships with their town begins to shift. Um, so he compares it just when you join the gym, you start seeing changes in the mirror, you begin to feel different about yourself, you feel a little bit more pride. Um, when the everyday appearance of a city changes, people feel differently about it. They begin to care about it, take pride in it, and engage with it. Um, so litter cleanup, of course, is just one aspect of community pride and beautification, but it makes such a huge difference. Um, and we're really lucky here in Sullivan County to have some, some wonderful people leading the charge to, to combat litter. And we've been affectionately calling them litter warriors. Um, so who, who are these people? Um, I would like to introduce, um, we have Kelly Bukta from Daddy Flies. She's the co-owner of, of Daddy Flies in Livingston Manor. Um, Frank DeMeo, the supervisor in the town of Liberty. Sergeant Joe Papo from the Village of Liberty Police Department. Uh, and Aaron Dudley, who is the executive director of the Hurleyville Performing Arts Center. Um, and today she's speaking in, in her role as a, as a citizen warrior um, against litter. So each of these people bring um, a different perspective, experience, approach. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to hear their, their stories. So we're gonna get started with Erin. Erin um, is a mother, a choreographer, an arts educator, an event producer with experience um, in creative support for visual and performing artists. Prior to starting a family, she served uh, as faculty for the dance minor at Stony Brook University and led art and wellness retreats internationally and throughout the Catskills. 
Um, Erin relocated with her family to Sullivan County in 2015. Um, after 22 years in, in New York City, um, she founded the yoga space in Hurleyville uh, and, and now serves as executive director um, at the Hurleyville Performing Arts Center. Um, so she lives with her family in the woods uh, along the Mongop River, and she has a pretty cool story about some things she did for a birthday, I believe. Um, so Erin, if you want to tell everybody what, what happened. Thank you, Shannon. Um, yeah, first of all, I want to thank Sullivan Renaissance for the opportunity to, and Shannon, um, all of you at Sullivan Renaissance for the opportunity to tell you all about my little project. Um, so I bought my property, um, first of all, as an artist, I just never thought I would own a home. It was, you know, just not something that felt accessible to my generation and to, um, you know, to nomadic artists in general. And I would enjoyed the beauty of this area started for so many years, starting around 2005, I started to lead retreats up here. And it healed me during just being in the woods. Nature has always been my healing place, my temple, my church, my family is there. And I really appreciate that you started with that, that Jeff Spiegler quote, because I really think that our health too is uh, the mirror is the environment around us. So I really appreciate that, that quote. We can see how healthy we are in our physical bodies by what's happening around us and the art around us and in the, the nature around us. Um, so I bought my property in 2016 here in um, Liberty and there's a lot of acreage here and it was astounding to me that I had the opportunity to be the um, steward of this property. Um, there was a huge amount of dumping on the property. And when I told people that I'd bought this property, the immediate response was usually, oh, that's disgusting over there, isn't it? And right next door is a huge falling down building that we've been documenting um, in a beautiful photo essay since we first moved in. Um, we live along the headwaters to the Mongup River. So it's interesting because when we first moved here, we rented down near Eldred and we, I fell in love with the Delaware River. And to then be at the headwaters of the Mongop River, it's a, 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 it's called a river, but it's a stream and it actually then turns into a larger, it becomes an actual river after it passes under 17. And then ultimately, eventually it does feed into the Delaware River. So the amount of dumping that I saw along the river here on my property is at the top of a very high cliff. And every day when I would walk by it, it just broke my heart. It's just an unbelievable amount of dumping. And um, I turned 51 last year and um, I decided to rather than spend money on a party, um, what I decided would make me happy would be to clean up that disgusting dump because ultimately where I want to spend my time is in um, the natural spaces around me. Um, it was an overwhelming idea, overwhelming task. And whenever I spoke to people about it, for the last many years, it was always seen as just impossible. The neighbors had done it once before um, in the area. They had brought out um, heavy machinery and gotten all the trash out. And then um, it, it was hard to tell that that had ever happened because there was so much garbage. Um, so I just started throwing a wide net and I started a GoFundMe campaign. And we gathered a lot of support. I raised um, $3,500 from the community and primarily neighbors. And I reached out to uh, the highway department and spoke to, at that time, um, I spoke to Matt DeWitt, who was at that time um, serving in a different post, but was incredibly um, encouraging and helpful. And uh, I should thank Supervisor uh, Frank Mayo too, who was 
uh, always willing to listen and help. And um, your confidential secretary, uh, Nick Rusin, too, had to take endless amounts of calls for me. So once I decide to do something, I'm pretty annoying and persistent. And it was very clear to me that there was no way I could do this by myself. So the first thing that I did that was really irritating to Thompson Sanitation was rent a giant 30 yard dumpster that you see in that image there and they came and put it in place and then I realized it was so big that it was in the wrong place and they had to come back and move it and they were not happy about that but they did it and I was really grateful for that. And then I was hauling up every year on my own from the beginning of doing this I'd been since I bought the property every year, I would haul up garbage bags by myself. And now this is a cliff. It's a it's a top, it's a road that runs along the Manga River and drops straight down. So um, it, you know, I, I was 50 doing this. So I have no, I, I'm strong. I, I did it. I was dragging up 20 bags a year. Uh, and some of them were animal carcasses wrapped in plastic bags. Um, disgusting things, mostly um, the biggest thing that we found most often was uh, construction garbage. So people were cleaning out these abandoned houses and dumping them and then hunters. So it, was, it seemed to run the gamut and I like to photo document it and set up little, if you ever see little scenes along the road in Liberty, I probably did that. And I set them up and make it look like a lovely little living room and take photos. And um, ultimately someone would pick those up because they're really beautiful chairs and things like that. So I started to get people's attention and someone recommended Garcia's property management and they were superheroes, absolute superheroes. They came out and hauled up over 200 tires. And um, that dumpster from Thompson Sanitation was completely filled. So I'm standing on it there and it's empty. And then to the left, you see someone from, uh, or to the, uh, under my name, Garcia's property management, standing on top of it when it was full. And we had to jump up and down on it and make sure that it was all down so they could actually take it away. And there's still more, but they did break its back. That's the majority of it. So that, I raised $3,500 and they, the dumpster was filled. They took that away. And then we invested in um, security cameras and put them along the road. And then we invested now beyond the cost of that. So that, that fundraiser and that money was spent pretty right away on that cleanup for Garcia's property management. The security cameras, lots of people donated to me, but that those cameras, the battery style cameras don't last that long. So we um, invested in a video surveillance system that we put along the road and we got the DEC involved because shortly after we cleaned it up, someone came back again and dumped 20 bags of garbage. Um, we got the DEC involved at that time and um, bumped up our surveillance, um, our surveillance system. I walk the road every day with my dog, like I'm guarding a compound and um, it's unfortunate because what starts to happen is every truck that goes by, you start to feel suspicious. Is that the person that's gonna dump? And that's absolutely not the way that we wanna to relate to our neighbors and relate to each other and feel about each other. It's very clear that this is a, a, a systemic problem and a much bigger problem than we can tackle by, the, by, just, um, than by just picking up the dump. So this is a start and it's one small portion along the Mongop stream. And I've seen couches float down the stream. I've seen some crazy things and Garcia's property management talks about what they're seeing. I've seen neighbors bury their construction trash. So really this is very clearly organizational um, and education. And um, I really hope that leaders and policymakers at all levels will start or continue to prioritize public health over short-term gains. Um, we really need leadership that's um, rewilding the way rather than paving the way. Um, it's a really old story, right? In movies and art and everywhere, it's an old story. Um, and uh, we've reached a massive tipping point. My son doesn't see fish in the stream. That used to be a trout stream um, and they're just not there anymore. So it's a start and um, hopefully we can lead and show um, 
a different way towards health um, in, a, in a compassionate way towards towards everyone. Escapism is huge in that. And um, I, I'd like to continue helping in a bigger way. And um, if you see my signs along the manga upstream, um, give me a little honk and a wave and uh, I'll still be here um, monitoring my little patch of river. Thank you for letting me tell my story. Yeah, thank you, Erin. That is so, it's it's so wonderful to see because we we have kind of a range today of like from the parcel level from just from your property all the way to an entire municipality. So, um, but I, I appreciate your your perspective and I think um, your enthusiasm and, and kind of team building and, and consensus building around it for this one property, you know, is, um, is really special. So thank you. Um, and on a, on a similar thread around, um, you know, keeping watersheds clean, um, we have Kelly Bukta from Deddy Flies, who um, is uh, the co-owner of Deddy Flies, which is a fly fishing shop in Livingston Manor. Um, she uh, is also a board member of New York Backcountry Hunters and Anglers, Theodore Gordon Fly Fishers, uh, a member of Trout Unlimited. Uh, in her role at Deddy Flies, she has helped orchestrate seasonal cleanups that are centered around community and partnerships with other groups. Um, I really, I, I used to work at the Upper Delaware Council. I think Ashley's here and they've organized some really incredible um, litter sweeps and you can see the shirts there and I know Kelly's worked with them. Um, but the fishing community here in Sullivan County is a really incredible community around litter removal and keeping our, our environment clean, of course, for the health of, of the environment, the ecosystem, the fish. Um, so Kelly, take it away with, with your experiences. Thank you, Shannon, and everyone on the panel. Um, definitely want to express gratitude for taking time out of your day to talk about this kind of trashy subject that it is. As literally and physically, metaphorically, every which way you say that. Um, and as uh, one of as the tourist destination within the county, and also as the county sees a, a swelling of permanent residents, new residents, and transient residents that are up for the summer, perhaps. Uh, fly fishing has always been a recreational sport for centuries in this area. Um, and we know for a fact that fly fishing brings anglers to the most beautiful, and the most pristine waters. And as a partner in the shop, we believe that it is our duty to practice responsibly and in water stewards and practice stewardship. And also practicing it means that we also advocate and, and teach for it too. And I think our story begins with four years ago when we moved to Livingston Manor, we were given the opportunity to have the Willow Weemaw Creek right across the street from us, very visible in the shop. And we looked at how we could give back both the visitors that were coming into the shop, the seasoned anglers that were fishing and have been fishing here for decades, and the new people that were into the sport. Educate, and, and that's the stance of the shop. And what better way to educate and practice but is to, to lead the charge on it and to start partnering with other organizations that are like-minded and are willing to get dirty, uh, put on some gloves and, and muck boots and things and get in the river, particularly with a, a focus on the waters and clean up beer bottles and clean up cigarette butts and, and trash and anything else that comes our way. Um, and for four years now, we've been working with Trout Unlimited, Theater Board and Fly Fishers, Pig Farm Inc., Upper Delaware River Council, Delaware River Club, uh, Livingston Manor Chamber and Red Rose, anyone, uh, Smoke Joint, anyone who wants to work with us to collaborate and network. Um, it's a good community building exercise to get people to grow an appreciation and understanding for the environment, and particularly the waterways and how everything comes back to cold, clean water. Uh, and we're fortunate enough to have the New York City reservoirs that are highly protected as they are the drinking water for a large city, but even our local waters. I mean, we have yet to have that crisis. And everyone who comes in the shop, we talk about responsible recreation, take, pack it in and pack it out. If you see something, fill your net with trash. Uh, don't come in and complain about the weekenders or complain about other fishermen or complain about this person or that person. Be part of the solution and, and take a bag with you and, and fill it up. 
um, we have been seeing more trash on the rivers and we do want to tackle it by uh, trying to educate and trying to offer receptacles and offer at least within manner the chamber that there is proper place to dispose. After the pandemic, we've seen a rise in takeout containers. And where do people put these things uh, when when they when they when they're finished? They put them in a trash bin, and if there isn't one around, they might be proactive and take it to their car, or they might just toss it in the woods or toss it from their cars. Um, so, how do we combat that issue? Um, and it's just trying to get the word out and trying to offer chances where you can come in and clean up, whether it's for service hours for students. Um, the great thing about community cleanups are they're accessible. They don't cost anything. It's a nominal cost. You can work with the county for a free garbage day or for tags. Um, it gives a an effort. It gives a chance to team build and to network with groups, whether they're scouts or senior citizens or school or religious organizations or conservation nonprofits. There, there's a big uh, scope that you can get people involved if they're willing, even neighbors, someone new to the community, come out and learn, meet your neighbor. And I think that offers a connection that's real simple. And it could be an hour of your time, it could be half an hour, it could be a four hour cleanup. We found that if we do them from 10 to two, roughly like a four to six hour window is comfortable for the morning people, comfortable for the after lunch people um, who are interested. And uh, that, that's our scope uh, we've done. We try to aim to do about five cleanups a year. Sometimes they're successful, sometimes they're rained out. Sometimes uh, we have, uh, when we have partnerships, we are able to uh, blow it out of the water and get more people involved and network and use social media and use all the tools uh, that are at hand for us to be advantageous in spreading the message. And then some okay. of the pictures are from our most recent cleanup in yeah. April that we had with the Upper Delaware River, Red Rose and the Delaware River Club um, and then there were some chairs and beach, and then another one is just a river cleanup of a refrigerator door um, that we were able to haul out. Well, these are great, great photos, and Kelly, I, so I could say it was fun. Oh, good, <laughs> good. I'm glad, and I really, I, I appreciate what you said too. It was a small part, but um, that you know, you just you give people like trash bags to go, you know, when they come into your store, and I think that's such an easy way that, you know, business owners or municipalities could, you know, just have a stack on hand for people that come in and, and just say, Hey, if you're going out on the river, you're walking about main street or, or whatever that take one of these bags and pick up some trash while you're at it. Um, I think that's a really easy strategy. Um, and, and I appreciate your, your sense of, of community building. I like that, you know, get your neighbors together, go on a walk it, you know, it doesn't have to be um, a huge pre-planned event. Um, so we, we really appreciate your, your efforts and your, your advice. So um, in, in the similar vein of, of community building, um, we have Sergeant Joe Papo from the Village of Liberty Police Department, who in the Village of Liberty um, has, has organized some, some cleanups recently. And so, so Sergeant Joe Papo has served as a police officer in Sullivan County for 22 years. Uh, he's the community liaison officer for the Village of Liberty PD. Uh, he also serves as a supervisor for the school resource officer program um, for Liberty Central Schools. Uh, and most importantly, he is a husband and father to a family that lives right here in Sullivan County. So Joe, take it away. My technology is not my strong suit. So can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, as being part of the community liaison officer, one of my responsibilities was, was to connect and create um, relationships with, with the community and law enforcement in a manner that isn't necessarily just vehicle traffic stops or us doing foot patrol. And one of those things was what we call litter pluck and it's been extremely successful. We've had two of them now. And what I really love about it is that not only does it create a relationship between the community and the police officers, but it also demonstrates that we take as much ownership of the community as the community members. And the litter pluck, I think, is not only demonstrates a very humble way of doing that, but it also shows that we're taking ownership and we're trying to teach the next generation to do that too. Because um, we reach out to the local sports teams, we reach out to the Cub Scouts, the Boy Scouts, who have all been great, the Girl Scouts, who all come. And your parents bring their children to it. And what it ultimately does is, is shows that the community matters. Um, we go through the Polk Park, we try to go to the entire Main Street, and it is amazing how much trash we pick up. Uh, the picture that's there, uh, it's not the first one. The first one we had, I think, 23 bags of trash, and that was in less than three quarters of a mile. Um, 
that just just alongside the roadway. Um, so it was important for us to let the kids know that A, we'll go and pick up trash, B, that, that if everybody is accountable, everybody assists in it, then we understand that all the property, all this main street, everything, it belongs to all of us. Um, for 100 years, we've had a village ordinance that says you can't litter. You'd be ticketed, you could be arrested, all these things. It really was not an effective way to, to keep our main street clean. It just wasn't. What we really needed was a group effort. And I think what law enforcement needed to do was show it, the community it matters to us too. You know, it's, we're not just there to write someone a speeding ticket, we're there to take care, um, um, to place value in our buildings and our main street. Um, and I think it was a great message. You can see our bicycle officer was there. Hi, Seven, how are you? Hi guys, I'm sorry I'm in the elementary school and everybody says hi to me. Have a good day guys. Um, so um, to get back to where I was going, I, really our, our, our biggest problem for us in particular from a law enforcement and Main Street thing is we do have to make sure that we're available for a secondary reason. And that is while we pick up trash, some of our trash consists of some drug paraphernalia or some illegal activity, which um, again, can either be a, a drastic thing for the kids to be involved or it can be a teachable moment. It could be a moment where we share with the kids that, you know, there are poor decisions being made in our community, but they are the community. The kids in, in 10 years will be the community and they get, they have the power of choice, which is the most powerful thing that they can have. And that is they can decide who they're going to be in the future, what their choices are going to be about their community um, and where we can go from here. And we make it very clear with them that we're counting on them. We're counting on them. Um, we're not doing this for now. We're doing it for tomorrow, um, which which is absolutely crucial. Um, and that's the only way we're going to get anything done, really. Um, and, and we celebrate it. We celebrate it. Because at the end of the day, hopefully when they're driving up and down Main Street and they don't see trash, they're going to they're gonna have that sense of accountability and responsibility for making it better. And uh, we're doing several things like that, but just recently these two events that we've had over the last year have been extremely successful. Um, in order to put it on, uh, the PBA helps. Uh, the garage bay that you can see behind where they're standing there, we'll, we'll cook hot dogs, we'll go chips, soda, we'll, uh, you know, water. We, we have a little 10, 15 minute um, snack time. And again, to make it at the end of the day, job well done, which is what we're looking for. Uh, just a job well done. So, but that's thanks. excellent. Thank no, you. we, I really appreciate that. And I think, um, there's, I, I like your point. Like I think Denise said in the chat that it's humble. Um, it just, there's so much to learn on those, on those litter cleanups, whether it's just about the litter and community pride, or like you said, those teachable moments where you can have those conversations with kids around, around a difficult topic. Um, I think there's so much more to local police, the, you know, local police departments enforce safety and, and uphold safety. And there's more to community safety than, like you said, writing speeding tickets. It's about keeping the community clean and healthy and safe in, in more ways than, than one. And, and litter cleanups are, are a huge way that you guys are, are implementing that. So I, I applaud your efforts. And I think it's a, a great initiative. And um, we're happy to, I know a couple of us, I wasn't able to make it, but a couple of us were at the at the cleanup. And I know that they they said it was just a wonderful, wonderful community event. So um, we, we appreciate being part of that. Um, and yeah, and in also in Liberty on the, uh, on the kind of municipal side of things, uh, we go to, Supervisor Frank DeMeo, who joins us uh, from Liberty Town Hall. He's the uh, supervisor for the Town of Liberty. Um, he's been involved in the community and with Renaissance projects, I think, before we even officially existed. Uh, he's a founding member of Liberty Alive, which established some well-known public places like uh, LaPolte Park. Um, he's got a background in uh, a background and education in landscape architecture. So I think he's really a wealth of knowledge when it comes to design and care of public spaces. 
Uh, he was first supervisor from 2004 to 2007, and then I think he, he decided he hadn't had enough and returned in 2020 um, to be supervisor again. So, Frank, let's hear about what Liberty's up to uh, at the municipal level with littering and dumping. Well, thanks so much, Shannon, for inviting me, and thanks, Sullivan Renaissance, and thanks for the other uh, participants who are speaking today. Um, I just wanted to say that Aaron, um, Aaron suggested that she was annoying and persistent. I consider that she was very ambitious and she was very humble. That was not a small project. That was huge, the amount of uh, work that she did. And we certainly uh, appreciate Officer Popo's work and uh, especially with regards to the education component uh, in this. And we're, we're hoping to uh, assist in that regard too on a town level by, uh, you know, we're, putting together an advertising campaign uh, to educate the public a little bit more on why it's so important to, uh, you know, get control of this dumping and littering uh, in general. So uh, we, we expect to roll that out sometime next month. But uh, some of the other things we've done, the, the, the town board has uh, unanimously approved a, a, a pretty sufficient, significant amount of uh, our ARPA funds, which are the federal funds given for, uh, uh, you know, to help communities, uh, towns, villages, uh, the federal funds that, that were given to uh, the municipalities uh, to, to, as part of um, the recovery process from COVID. And we put uh, a two year, we're putting uh, together a two year plan and have budgeted for two years on a, major cleanup uh, initiative. And what it, what it includes is, uh, you know, we, we have two things. We have illegal dumping and we have the littering issue. So um, with the help of the highway department, and I can't uh, express my thanks enough for Matt DeWitt and the work that he's done and how he's assisted us in this regard. Uh, they, they did a monumental effort earlier in the spring in cleaning up a lot of the roadside uh, dumping. And uh, Matt also uh, had an, uh, an extra pickup truck that uh, from the highway department that were, uh, he, he took the time, he fixed it up, put lights, made it safe and uh, got some vests. And we've uh, hired seasonal help uh, through Parks and Rec and they're gonna utilize that truck and they're gonna spend the summer going around and picking up litter, garbage, dumping, and whatnot. Uh, and and we've, we are putting together a list of those roads that are most affected. And, um, you know, there are, there are signs on the side of the truck and, you know, we just want to show people out there that, hey, look, we're doing this as a municipality, you can help. And folks like Aaron and many others, you know, we have a tremendous amount of volunteers that go out there and clean up roads and and, uh, you know, these are unsung heroes. These are people who just, you know, you don't hear about, but we know they're out there and they clean up their roads. So um, in addition to that, uh, part of our plan includes uh, getting some major signage on those roads that are uh, most affected by illegal dumping. And, uh, you know, they may be a bit intimidating, but that's what they're going to be geared towards those people that, uh, you know, we've increased our fines. It's going to be, you know, illegal dumping. Violators will pro be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Um, we've had tremendous uh, cooperation from many people in, who have reported uh, illegal dumping situations. In fact, uh, we've advised all our employees that when you're out and about, if you should see something, you know, it's the whole thing, see something, say something. So uh, the other day, a boat official was out and he saw a U-Haul and a pickup truck dumping tires off the side of a bank on Tansman Road. And he stopped and he, and he, he gave them an opportunity. And uh, my assistant, Nick, and I also had this happen to us once. It looked you go back and you pick up that debris and they were mostly tires. And I'll be back in a half hour. And if it's still there, uh, I have your license plate number. And, you know, he took pictures of the, of the plate. And uh, he went back a half hour later and the tires were still there. He called the DEC. Well, the DEC now has it. And our fines are pretty stiff. The DEC is a lot tougher. So oh, um, when we find out and, and we get the DEC's report, uh, the public will know because it's a matter of public knowledge. 
because part of this uh, part of this is to just let folks know liberty's not going to tolerate it, and you will be identified uh, if you're caught. Um, because quite frankly, we've had it. Um, we've we've been in touch with the camps. Uh, Nancy Levine years ago uh, had talked to the camps, and and when you know a lot of times you see the campers walking up the roads, and um, she started this initiative where she left bags out there and said, "Here, while you're out there, pick up garbage along the road and leave the bags there, and we'll come pick them up and get rid of them." So we're gonna we're gonna initiate that again this year. Um, one of the biggest problems we've had is our tires. Tires are a big issue, and I'm sure Erin can attest to that because she hauled out I don't know two, three, four hundred tires. It was a tremendous amount. We have a if you're ever by the Liberty Town Barn, you'll see a huge pile of tire, tires that are not only from our own equipment, but uh, from, from the tires that we picked up off the side of the road. Part of our investment is to get rid of that tire pile and any others that come in. Uh, we've also set up uh, cameras, surveillance in uh, those areas that are most prone to illegal dumping. So, uh, and uh, we'll see what happens there. We have been successful with that program in the past. I know under Brian Rourke's administration, they caught somebody on Barton Road. And uh, we're also um, reaching out to those folks that have adopted a road, have adopted a road just to, uh, you know, again, encourage them to continue with that program. And uh, just a little side note, uh, my assistant Nick and I, uh, we adopted Barton Road which uh, there are times where there's so much stuff dumped on Barton Road that you could probably fill a small apartment building with furniture and TVs and everything. So uh, Nick and I adopted that road and we went and cleaned up the bigger debris with the help of the highway department. And uh, here's, here's some of the things that could happen when you're out there cleaning up. I was in my garden the other day and a neighbor of ours who lives on Barton Road, I live right across the street from Barton Road, came up to me and said, we just want to thank you so much for cleaning up Barton Road. And I, they gave me the most delicious cheesecake we ever had. And we got to share it with our family. So there are, there are perks that come with cleaning up, cleaning up the road. So uh, thanks to our neighbor for that. But uh, if you do see somebody out there cleaning up, uh, anything, you know, we just ask that you uh, stop for a second and thank them for doing that and uh, and follow their lead because, uh, quite frankly, we're tired of the dumping and we're tired of the littering and we're going to do everything we can to uh, to help our residents uh, in this regard. But and thanks so much for our volunteers. Thank you, Frank. That's a great point. Volunteer appreciation is so important, even just a simple thank you. Like you said, stop pull over on the side of the road, thank them. Um, I know Ann Louise, our volunteer program manager, can attest to the power of, of gratitude with your volunteers and retention and, and getting them back. So um, I, I appreciate that note. And I think it's great to see. I know a couple of our municipalities in Sullivan County um, have really great uh, litter kind of uh, policies and, and things. So I appreciate your, your perspective on that. Um, I do wanna bring it back to all of us, um, I think you guys have some, some great experiences and we really appreciate you all being with us today. I do wanna open it up since this is kind of conversational. If anyone has questions, comments, wants to, um, to speak up or, or address any of our panelists directly or, or generally feel free to unmute yourself um, and, or put it in the chat, whatever works best for you. And, and while people are people, while people are thinking, um, I do want to ask um, all all of our panelists what um, what advice would you give to somebody who's considering wanting to start an, an anti litter campaign or or project of some sort? What would you what would you tell them? In any of you, um, in any any particular order? Um, Shannon, it's Frank. I I you know I think. Um... Aaron said it best, you know, be persistent. And I, I know here in Liberty, um, we don't consider it annoying at all when, when you call, call us and say, you know, hey, we need some help here, 
something. Um, it, it really, it really takes persistence. And while sometimes, you know, you may, I know we've had many times where people said, you know, oh, we cleaned up such and such a road. And the next day it was all back there. You know, well, I know that's frustrating and, and it can be discouraging at times, but um, sooner or later people will get it. And, um, and if that is a situation, you know, by all means, we'll, we'll set up a camera because it will work. That, that does work. Thank you. Erin, did you have a comment? I did. Um, a lot of people told me, not a lot, but there were, it's really easy to get jaded and feel like there's nothing that you can do because it's so overwhelming. And there is a huge problem that's so much bigger than all of us and, and bigger than our town. Um, so I guess my advice would be um, to start with your little patch of universe and don't let anyone tell you you can't do anything. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Did anyone have any additional questions or, or thoughts for? There's one in the chat, Shannon. Oh, is there? Let's see. Thank you. Okay, awesome. From Joyce, how do we tackle trash issues at stores that are unsightly and unhealthy? That's a great question. Um, I would say... Frank or, or Sergeant Popo, do you have any comments on, on that? Because I'm sure you see that on your main streets. Um, okay, I'm assuming everybody can hear me again. Again, technology. Um, I would do two things with it. Um, first and foremost, I would make code enforcement very much aware of it. Um, the enforcement part is very important. But the reality of the situation is I do feel that trash and litter is a direct reflection of our thought process about our community. Um, you can drive by many different homes and residences within our community and we could see those people who mow their lawn, who pick up trash, who, who place a value in what they have, what they're doing. But we also pass certain places where you have to wonder how come they don't have that same pride. So how do you address that? I don't know if you do that through enforcement. Um, I do believe you do it through communication. I do believe that you sit there and you talk to them about very different aspects of it. I, I think that when you go to a certain community and you see garbage on the streets and you see trash on the streets, I think we're all very much aware of the, the economic situation there or the fact that many of them aren't from our own community. So how do you help them find pride in their community? How do you help them find pride in their area? Um, that's difficult. And the same thing can be done with businesses. Now, if it's a commercial business, well, there's always someone above them. You can always call and go above them. You can go to corporate. You can discuss that. Sadly, um, the local businesses who generally take a lot of pride in their, their business. Um, I know on Main Street, we have a, a bakery, Floyd and Bobo's, and those owners are there every day sweeping and picking up garbage and picking up trash, and they have pride. And subsequently, they're more successful. Um, we can acknowledge them. Maybe we don't have to point out the businesses that aren't as successful and aren't as caring of their business, but they'll notice, they'll notice. I think if you hit them in the wallet, they're gonna pay attention. Um, it's just from what I see, it's just from the conversations that I have, um, but I think communication is ultimately the key, either through enforcement, through going above their head on corporate, or just having a, a serious conversation with the business owner if you can, if you feel that's comfortable enough to do. Yeah, thank you. That's a really, a really great point. Um, those conversations are so important. And also the positive, like you said, the positive reinforcement. Um, I do want to call out my coworker, Carmela, for a minute. Um, <laughs> she's not expecting this, but it brought me to think um, that here at Sullivan Renaissance, we do offer business assistance grants um, that can help as a resource to those existing businesses um, to do a multitude of things to their, to clean up their storefronts, whether it's you know, planting flowers, planters, painting. Um, Carmela, I just want you to, to say hi for a minute and, and add to that just so that people know that resource is there that they can refer people to as well. Yeah, definitely. We have um, a business assistance grant uh, program that is on a rolling deadline for up to $2,500. It is a matching um, grant. So you have to match it um, dollar for dollar, and it's a reimbursable grant. Um, we also have this, um, you're not gonna be able to see it. Uh, I have got this little card um, that 
uh, was created by Christy last year, free to low cost tips to enhance your curb appeal. Um, we can, do we have this on the website already? Because I feel like we could put this on a resource on our website. We should, um, you're right. I don't think it's on there yet, but I think we should absolutely put that on there because that's a great, a great thing. And we could also have them printed and, and people can hand them out to businesses if they yeah, want. Yeah, we do. We have a little card. I don't know if you can see it. Yes. <laughs> We have a little card that is printed and it is, it's, you know, avoid clutter in your windows, sweep your storefront, um, keep it free of debris, cigarette butts and litter. Um, I know when we did the litter plucking through Liberty um, and Louise and I, we noticed a few locations that could use a, gar a garbage um, receptacle. So being aware of that and, and having good placement for, uh, for, you know, to dispose of litter. And like Aaron said, it doesn't matter how small your project is, keep keep it up because every little bit helps. And that's my little pitch. <laughs> Carmela, sorry to put you on the spot. I appreciate that. Um, I do also, there's another question in the chat. Um, I'm going to direct this one at Frank first because um, I think he'd answer it best. Uh, Cassandra Johnstone from, from Sullivan County Planning asked, is there a way to track disposal of construction and demolition debris when issuing permits? That's a really great question. Really great question that I don't have an answer for. <laughs> I mean, I don't know how you would really uh, track down construction debris um, unless, unless there was something very specific that were being demoed uh, that our code official might know about that would be unique. Uh, to the pile of rubbish that we would find. Um, you know, it certainly is a big issue. I, I know the biggest issue we see in town are roof shingles. Roof shingles are always seem to be uh, an issue. Um, you know, um, and yeah, I, I, I don't know of any other way other than, you know, if, if there are some unique, something unique. And, and I suspect, I, I don't know this for sure, I suspect though that uh, while a lot of it may be local, some of it may be from out of town contractors too. So they could be from jobs from anywhere. Um, that's, that's yeah, a, that's a tough one. But... That's a challenge. Uh, yeah. Again, if we catch catch them on those roads with surveillance or some, by some other means, um, that seems to be one of the things that would be most effective. Great. And I also have, um, uh, Chrissy has her hand raised. Hand raised. Um, Chrissy Rutledge is a councilwoman from the town of Rockland um, and lives in Roscoe. Chrissy, do you want to? Yeah. So I'm also the the president of the chamber here in Roscoe, and I've had so many complaints as we do every summer in both communities about the litter that we get, not only on the main street but throughout the whole town. So we've had a lot of debate if we should just remove the garbage receptacles off of the main street because what we're getting is the out of towners just filling up our garbages when they're leaving town and then they're full. So then nobody has anywhere to put their other garbage. So I was seeing like Calicoon, they don't have garbage receptacles on their main street and I don't see garbage. So I don't know if, what is everybody's thoughts on that? Should we remove the garbage bins? What do you guys think? A great question, Chrissy. I, I appreciate that. Anyone, Carmela, I think you have your Hand raised. That's a good yeah, one. I do, and um, Officer Popo does as well. Um, I I personally feel I'd rather have my um, garbage receptacles packed full with garbage than when they're leaving out of town, tossing it out of the window. That's my personal opinion. That's always been my thought too. So then I was wondering if maybe we should have, you know, a large dumpster available for people to do that you know, to throw, you know, they're going to do it anyway. So should we just get, you know, a large bin for them to throw their garbage in? Do you guys think that would be a good idea? Or, you know, the bears might then, you know, cause a lot more trash with that. So we've been back and forth. And so your opinions are greatly appreciated. Yeah, I think Kelly, Kelly Bukta has her hand raised. Kelly, did you want to respond to that? Yes, it's, you know, it's definitely a double edged sword. I know between just, you know, just with the example you gave Chrissy, that you know, with between campgrounds and the motels and, and the lodging in the area, it, it, it's the double edged sword is we want the tourism, we want the traffic, we want, but we also have to have a place 
for them to take their garbage when they go back to the city. It's not logical for them to pack up and, and drive for three hours with trash. In a perfect world, I would love to see people do that. But I think having the cans out there, and whether it's the county or it's the town, that somebody's that that it becomes a job that in the summertime parks and recs that they're actively monitoring those can't those those bins even two or three times a day uh to see what's going on and, and to empty them and keep them clean because we want them to buy and support the restaurants and the vendors but then we also have to i feel provide a place for them to dispose of it properly and not many people know about the county dumps or they open the garbage is open enough that you could leave something you know if it's only open saturday till two not many people are aware of that or you know what what it is to remove trash too. So you know, I think in general, it all comes back to how we how we educate and remind people. Don't forget to you know to whether it's a small sign in a window, take pride as uh, Officer Papo said, take pride in where you live, um, and whether you're a resident or you're visiting, you know our community is your community too. Yeah, thank you, Kelly. That's really an important message, and I also want to read um, in the comments too. Freda um, Eisenberg from Sullivan County Planning said, Calicoon does have trash cans on their main street for trash and recyclables. Lids have been designed though to limit size of what can be placed inside, i.e. no full bags of household trash. So that's one way to, to address it. Maureen Lerner, you have your hand raised. Hello. Oh, you're muted. I'm unmuting. Okay, there you are. thank you. Yep. Thank you. And I want to jump on what Kelly was saying. So. I believe education is vital, and I know it sounds silly about when you educate people about how to throw out garbage and where to throw out garbage, but I do believe that's very vital. So with that said, is there anything we can do to educate the community? I live in the White Lake Homes, and um, you know, it, particularly in the fall months, people put out their garbage, they go away, and they come back the following weekend. They put them in little black bags and then the animals get to them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you would think something as simple as that, you know, don't put them in, you know, these kind of bags or whatever, but education is vital. Um, in New York City, they do have educational programs in the projects to teach people what to do. And it's not only what to do is where do they throw out the garbage and how do they throw out the garbage. In certain communities, they also give out bags. Um, in um, a section in New Jersey, it is mandated that you have to line your garbage pail with a clear bag so that when it goes to the dump, they recognize what's in there. So perhaps there's some very simple tactics we could do to change behavior. And to change behavior is rather difficult. We're also talking about maybe there's some incentives for people to change the behavior. And, and I'm not talking about throwing buckets of money but perhaps we could come up with some type of incentive for people to take pride in their community or to throw their garbage out properly. Um, one of the initiatives that um, a team in Bethel is taking, and I don't want to be long winded, and maybe you spoke about this earlier, sorry, I had to jump on late, but um, a team led by Roger Broom, who is um, creating what we're calling a dump teak which is a copy of some of the other communities that are doing things like this, where we're going to build um, at the um, transfer station, uh, uh, take it or leave it, so that people could see the value of garbage. So these are maybe very small endeavors or initiatives that could change behavior. Thank you. Thank you, Maureen. I really appreciate it. And, and for those of you who don't know Maureen, um, works with the town of Bethel on a, on some projects, and um, they've been doing a really great job tackling litter at the municipal level as well. So, thank you, Maureen, for those those ideas. I do want to wrap up our conversation. This has been really wonderful. Um, I really appreciate everybody's comments and participation um, on on this issue. And I want to also let everyone know to mark your calendars. Um, for our next uh, Renaissance Roundtable in July. It'll be July 20th, same time, same place. Um, it's of particular interest for municipalities, I think, um, but anyone is welcome. But we are going to be um, discussing some new funding initiatives for um, improving safety for pedestrians, bicyclists, um, auto uh, automobile operators as well, just all forms of transportation. Um, and some new funding initiatives for that. So mark your calendars. Um, details will be forthcoming. 
Uh, and as always, connect with us. Um, here's our, our contact information. And again, um, we do have our, uh, our May Renaissance Roundtable on our YouTube, and I'll be putting this one on our YouTube as well uh, in case anyone um, missed part of it or wants to share it with, with someone in their community. Um, I really appreciate everyone being here and, and caring about litter and caring about our community. Um, I think we have some really wonderful people here and that's why that's what makes Sullivan County so great. And um, we're, we're all in this together. So, you know, feel free to always contact us with ideas or, or issues, questions that you don't have answers to when it comes to litter. Um, we're happy to work through them with you and, and you know, hopefully build that, that um, partnership and, and um, consensus around litter in Sullivan County. So thank you all for being here. Um, we, we did it. We hit exactly one hour. Um, and uh, I hope to see you in July, maybe sooner. Uh, have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon and take care. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Be well. Okay, so.